light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Good morning, thanks for joining me. I'm Dave Grant from Escanaba, and I am subbing for Alex Meredith, the, the full-time host. Um, and I do hope that you'll get your Bible out and follow along with me today. Um, I won't be on through the winter, but then uh, maybe in the spring, Alex will need some time off and he'll give me a call and say, hey, you wanna cover for a little bit? And I'll come back on. So I'm always available to uh, host the show and I, I'm enjoying it. It's just uh, the longer I wait in between uh, hosting periods, the more it takes for me to remember how to put the thing in my ear and the microphone on my you know, uh, suit or sweater. So I'm glad they're very patient here. You know, we talked last week about the, our families and then our, our uh, church family. Well, I have a a TV6 family. You know, these guys have been working with us for 46 years, helping us to produce these shows for our viewing audience. And they've done a tremendous job, and I want to say thank you to them. Um, last week, we looked at one of the gifts that we receive while we're riding on this tandem bicycle built for two with Jesus. Now, the essay that I have for that, a couple people have asked me if I have a copy of it and could send it to them. Yes, I do. Uh, um, and I'd be more than willing to send you a copy of it or you can go and do a Google search on it um, or a Bing search or whatever search engine you use and just put in uh, um, uh, Road of Life or Bike Ride with Jesus and, and you'll find some of the versions. That's uh, author unknown, but I've seen different versions over the years as I've, I've used this in my own personal life to help me grow. On this bike, when I let Jesus take the front seat, he took me to places I needed healing and, and gifts that I needed. And then he said, give them away. They're too much weight because he likes to ride fast. Well, I have to learn how to give away the gift of love that I have received by giving it to others. And today we look at another gift, and that gift is uh, learning how to give. You know, giving is a, a gift. Um, one of the things that uh, I've always had trouble with is budgets. Uh, not that I don't understand them, but when I was little, my dad says, always put the Lord first in your budget. So when I actually, I have a spreadsheet now for my budget. Can you believe that? And this spreadsheet at the very top is the Lord and my offering to the church. And then I also have some discretionary income that I can give from as well, very much like any of us. But a lot of people will put other things in the first position. And I'm so glad my dad taught me, always put the Lord first because he's the one who gave you everything. And so I put the Lord first and then I put my rent and, and I put my gasoline expense and I, all the, the food, the shelter, but the Lord always comes first. So the gift of giving is one of the reasons I've learned how to give is because he gave to me. That was one of the gifts I received. So he wants me to give it away. I have a, a short, essay again today. This one I have read several times over the 30 years, um, and it's changed. Um, 
I'll just read a part of it and then I'll explain to you how it's changed. A basketball in my hands is worth about $25. A basketball in LeBron James's hands is worth about $75 million. It depends on whose hands it's in. A baseball in my hands is worth about $8. A baseball in Jacob deGrom's hands is worth about $27 million. It depends on whose hands it's in. I'm going to take a quick drink here. Now, it used to be I had Aaron Rodgers in here, too. You know, a football in my hands is worth maybe $20, bucks, 25 bucks, But a football in Aaron Rodgers' hands is probably worth about 60 million. I don't know what he makes. And that may have gone down given this season. Uh, it's not been a great year for the Packers, has it? But the, the point remains, it's much more valuable in his hands than it is in mine. I also had Tiger Woods in there at one time. Tiger Woods in that little golf ball. Well, he's got to the point where he's like, like me, kind of semi-retired, but that ball is still worth so much more. My, the balls I use are about $1.50 a ball when I go golfing. But in Tiger Woods' hands, they're still very, very, very valuable. And then I've got one here that will go along with our lesson directly. Uh, a staff or a rod in my hands will keep away a wild animal. A rod or staff in Moses' hands will part a mighty sea. It depends on whose hands it's in. Two fish and five loaves of bread in my hands is a couple of fish sandwiches. Two fish and five loaves of bread in Jesus' hands fed 5,000 plus people. It depends on whose hands it's in. Nails in my hands could produce a birdhouse. Nails in Jesus' hands will bring salvation to the whole world. It depends on whose hands it's in. As you can see, it depends on whose hands are using the resources. So put your concerns, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your families, and your relationships in God's hands because it depends on whose hands it's in. I love this. And at the bottom I wrote, this message is now in your hands. What will you do with it? Again, author unknown, but I tra traced it down to several different people that have used it, but they didn't claim authorship. And it's been changed so many times to be relevant. But the key is, if what you have, you use for the Lord, then you have been a good steward. So how do we learn to give? Well, I've actually put a lesson together. And it, if you've seen the commercial for the last two weeks, um, in Exodus 4 is a, a nice story about uh, God becoming impatient with Moses. The reason I say it's a nice story, because it ends well. Moses was asked by God to let his people go. They were in slavery in Egypt, and Moses was at the burning bush, and the burning bush spoke to him, and God says, I want you to go to Pharaoh and let my people go. And Moses didn't want to do it. Moses was... Uh, probably afraid of being arrested, thrown in prison, or executed. But he didn't want to go. And so let's turn back to the second book in your Bible, Exodus, which is way back in the beginning. But the name of the book is actually about letting God's people go. Exodus means going out. And the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt. And Exodus is the book that explains how they got out of slavery and began a nation of their own under God. So Exodus chapter 4, it's an exciting book to read. It's a, it's a narrative. 
where some books are really hard to read because they, they tend to be uh, rules and statutes and regulations and it's sometimes hard to follow. But this one is a narration of their journey. So in Exodus 4, we're going to look at verses 10 through 14. Moses said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? It's, is it not I, the Lord? In other words, you're talking to the Creator who made you. And you're saying, Ah, oh, I can't do it. I can't speak clearly. and I'm slow. Verse 12 says, Now therefore go. He's telling Moses, Go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming to meet you. And when he sees you, he, he will be glad in his heart. So Moses made up enough excuses that finally the Lord's anger was kindled or set on fire against Moses. So if God has given us something, a gift of some type, a talent, a natural gift, and we don't want to do what he wants us to do with it, is it possible he could get angry with us? I believe it is. I don't want the Lord angry at me. I want to be ready to use whatever gift he has given me. And that might be through creation. It might be through uh, special training. It might be through opportunities that he has opened up for me. But in one way or another, God has given all of us a gift. Um, I used to refer to it like this. Um, in the church, you need uh, hands. Uh, it's the body of Christ, so we use different parts of our body to talk about, you know, feet willing to go, hands willing to work. Um, and I've always considered myself to be the mouth because I'm willing to talk, I'm willing to speak. And so, uh, kind of the opposite of what Moses is doing, but Moses has got a whole bunch of baggage he's carrying from a fear of going back to Egypt, that he might be arrested. Because he did kill a man. He killed an Egyptian. And then he ran away. He's a fugitive from justice. He doesn't want to go back. So he makes up excuses. Well, I was given an opportunity to repent of the things that I've done wrong. I was given an opportunity through Jesus to say, I'm sorry and I'm willing to die to the past and I'll start living for you. And so then I was baptized into Christ, and I began a new life. Well, in that new life, I still have a mouth. And so that mouth can be used now to the glory of God, rather than running a business or doing something else with it. So are you willing to use what God has given you? And that's the key here. Remember, we're on this bicycle, and this is just an image, but it's kind of easy for me to fall back on because I can see myself in the, the back seat of the bicycle built for two and Jesus leading the way. And there are times that I might be apprehensive about going and talking to someone. Well, Jesus said, don't worry. I'm here with you. The power of God, the power of Jesus, he exhibits that in our lives. He is the one that does this work through us. It's not us. This all-surpassing power comes from God, not from us. So I want to turn, um, well, let me read this little paragraph here. Does the Lord have a reason to be angry with you? Think about something that you aren't doing with a gift that you've been given. And is it possible the Lord could be angry with you? Well, I believe God is asking us, what is that in your hand? Because when Moses was first contacted by God, he says, no, 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 I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this. And God said, 
what is that in your hand? And it was a shepherd's staff. And God said, throw it on the ground. And it turned into a snake immediately, and Moses ran away from it. And then God says, pick it up. And when he picked it up, it became a staff again. God said, I have unlimited power. I will be with you. They will believe you. I will be with you. So when I think about that, I realize God might have been asking me the same question through my life. What is in your hand? What is it you can do right now? I'm not asking you to do miracles. I'm just asking you to use what I've given you and do my will. So learning to give of myself to others is a very important gift. And many, many times we just don't see it. And it's not all money. When, when uh, David and Goliath, everyone knows that story, the little kid and the big giant. And he was defying the God of Israel. And David said, no, you can't do that. There wasn't any stopping him. And he took a slingshot. And he accomplished great things because of it. So can he accomplish those things in my life? I believe he can. But see, just believing in God isn't going to cut it. You have to put it into action. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got it here. Um, faith is belief in action. A lot of times people say faith is what saves you. Well, what is faith? Well, faith is when you believe something and you take action on it. It's not just believing that, oh, yeah, it'll happen. No, it's actually making it happen. So faith is, um, the way it's been put several times in Escanaba and different lessons is, um, faith is belief with legs on it. <laughs> I love that because the legs on faith, are on belief, mean you're actually going to do something with it. So let me look at James chapter 2, which is now at the other end of your Bible. James is right after the larger book of Hebrews, which is we're close to the end of the Bible. Hebrews and then James. And James is a, a small one tucked in there, but uh, there's a lot of wisdom in this little book. And in chapter 2, some of you may be already ahead of me figuring out, oh, I know where he's going. Verse 15. Well, let's start in 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works or legs on it? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So a lot of times in a, an English translation, the, the words faith and belief are used interchangeably, but they are different because belief, um, he even says this in James, I'm not sure where, even the demons believe God and shudder. They don't have any faith because they don't put their belief into action to do good works for God. So that's a very important passage of Scripture to understand that we have to be willing to take the step. God created us to accomplish His will. So if I don't move in His direction, what good is it? It's useless. And everybody understands that example. A man comes to my house and he's freezing to death and he doesn't have a warm coat. And I say, well, God bless you. I will pray for you and be on your way. And he goes away without a coat. Well, I've got three coats. Why am I not giving him one? That would be faith. That's putting it into action. And we see this in the secular world, too, outside of the body of Christ. We see people doing good things for their neighbors. 
But if it's not accompanied with a belief in God, then it's not faith. It's just good works. And good works by themselves are useless. Last week we talked about spiritual gifts are useless if there's not love. And love is from God. See how it all kind of wraps in together? I love because God loved me. I learned about love because God loved me. When I share that love with others, then I'm completing it. The same with giving. God has blessed me. Am I using my gift to bless others? That's so important. Hebrews, one book back. Hebrews chapter 11 is oftentimes called the chapter on faith. Um, because he gives example after example of people who lived by faith. Uh, in verse 8 it says, by faith, now remember our definition of faith, what is it? It's believing God and then acting on it. So by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So it's not like you are in charge. God wants you to do something. He prompts you to do something. Allow his power to work through you and accomplish good for him. So by belief in action or belief with legs on it, Abraham obeyed and, and went to a place where God told him to go. So that's what we're talking about here. Not, I believe in Jesus and everything's okay. No, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to live the way he's asked me to live. That is faith. So, what is that in your hand? And with Moses, of course, we know it was a staff. And that's found in Exodus 4, 1 and 2. So when we read earlier uh, in Exodus 4, a little bit later on, God was getting irritated with Moses, angry with Moses, because he just kept making excuses. Well, the power of God was seen in a simple stick, a shepherd's staff. By dropping it on the ground and becoming a snake, that's powerful. So that's Exodus 4, verses 1 and 2. Well, when we go into the New Testament, we see uh, God says, What is in your hand, Tabitha? So we got somebody else to think about here. So I want to read uh, a passage of Scripture in Acts chapter 9. In Acts 9, we read about a disciple of Christ, someone who had believed in Jesus and began acting on it. What is that in your hand, Tabitha? Now, I'm going to start in verse 36. It says, Now there was in Joppa, which is a city, a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity or acts of love. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda, another city, was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood there beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside, knelt down and prayed and turned to the body and he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Think about that for a minute. If God said to Tabitha, what is in your hand? Well, something she could do. She sewed or knitted and she made garments for people. That is what was in her hand. She took to her belief in Jesus and she began walking and sewing with it and giving gifts to people. And as a result, the whole town of Joppa heard about Jesus. So maybe you sew. Well, can that gift be used to bring glory to God? Yeah. Um, 
blankets are being made right now in our church family so that we can give a gift of love to newborns um, and the Delta County uh, Pregnancy Services is giving us some direction on how to give it to people who really need it. So maybe you can sew. Maybe you're a shepherd with a staff. Another one would be Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, which is one book over. Cornelius was a man, wasn't a Jew. He was a God-fearing Greek, which means he believed in God. He didn't know about Jesus yet. And so he prayed regularly to God. He gave gifts or alms to the poor. So he was always looking out for those who were less fortunate. God said, what is that in your hand, Cornelius? Well, it's, it's a gift to the poor. And he answered his prayer. He sent Peter to him and said, Peter will teach you everything you need to know. And Peter preached about Jesus and told him all about it. Cornelius, Cornelius believed and he took action. And after he was baptized, he taught everyone around. It reminded me of a story um, when Cornelius found out Peter was going to come and visit and he was going to tell him what he needed to do to be pleasing to God. Cornelius invited everybody over because he wanted everyone to hear it. We had a TV viewer back several years ago who called and said, you know, I'd like to study more about the Bible. And so we went out there. And when they found out we were going to come over and study with them, they invited all their family and friends. The place was 16 to 20 people. Very much like this. When you've got good news coming, you want to share it. I have to wrap up for today. Boy, I, I could go on and on and on and on. But I'm sure there's a football game this afternoon, so they're not going to let me go on. If you want to take our Bible course, we have a seven lesson booklet course that you can take. If you uh, contact Alex at the Church of Christ in Marquette, he can send you the first copy and then after you send the lesson sheet back, we'll send you the next one. If you need a Bible to study with, we have a hardcover English Standard Version Bible and we will give it to you for free. It's the same version we read here on the program. You can write to Alex at the Marquette Church of Christ, P.O. Box 372. The zip in Marquette is 49855. Or go on our webpage and you can ask for any of these items or ask a question and Alex will get back to you right away. I'm excited to have been back on for these four weeks and I'm looking forward to the springtime when I can come again. But uh, Alex will be back next week and your podcast will be back up and running. Thank you for being with me and have a great blessed week.